Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to be talking about some of the special hoops that FOF has, and it's had for a long, long time, um, but often people don't use them because they're not really sure of how to go about it, and they're not sure what designs work with it. So we're going to start with just seeing some creative ideas of um, how you can use the Grand Dream Hoop. And then we're going to talk about some things that will make it much easier to use. Some of it you might know. Some of it I bet you don't know. And I've got a lot of actually really cool techniques and tips that are going to make it a little bit easier for you to be successful using the Grand Dream Hoop. Now, the Grand Dream, Ho Dream Hoop has been around for a long time. The Creative Vision was the first machine that could use the Grand Dream Hoop. And um, the Creative Sensation and Creative... 4.5, if you have the larger embroidery arm, the 4.5 works with the Grand Dream Hoop. So um, this is not a new hoop, but often we forget about how valuable it is. And now it is coming with the Creative Icon. So the Creative Icon, I'm uh, sorry, the Creative Icon 2, and um, it's kind of coming back into use a little bit. So this is going to be a really fun way I hope to get you going with it. Now, I have all so many different samples that I've used the Grand Dream Hope Hoop with, and I'm not showing you all of them, but uh, I will give you an idea of some of the different things. This is a design that is made for the Grand Dream Hoop, and it has a split in the middle. I adjusted it a little bit, so not only does it meet, it looks like one large design. The original design was made to have like a window pane up and down and through the center. And I just took out some of those extra stitches and put them back together as one stitch. And then the stitching that was in the sky was not a uh, part of the design. So I did that in free motion and just made a little wall hanging out of that. Another design that I did, and I did this one quite a long time ago. It is a thread velvet design. And look at how beautiful it is. This is a standard type of design that's very easy to use because it has a very clear place in the middle where you can move and adjust the hoop. Designs that are meant for the Grand Dream Hoop have to be split into two. It's not possible to do it all in one, but what I want you to know is the Grand Dream Hoop, this is the biggest square hoop in the industry. Nobody else has a square hoop that is 13 and three quarter by 13 and three quarter. And we've had this for, I don't know, it's like 15 years or something like that. I should have checked the exact year. I think it was around 2005, but I, I could be off about the year. But imagine that we've had this technology for all of that time. So the thread velvet design, I'll give you another close up of it here. You can see I used a pole street fabric for it and I used a pole street piping for the side. And where this design would be flipped would be through the middle. Now, this is a pillow, that's a quilted pillow, and look at how gorgeous that is. I'll show you a little close up of it later on, but this was done, it's a little bit of a trapunto. It was a two-step technique, so that was a little trickier than Grand Dream Hoop, but it worked really well, and I'll tell you how I did that. I'll give you a little bit of a close up there to see how that was done, and I love this. This was one of the first times when I thought, that the Grand Dream Hoop, there's nothing that can really replace it. So the way this design was made, and this was a design that um, it was in the Premier Plus uh, software. I'm not sure uh, where you could find it anymore, but I'm I meant eventually you'd probably find it in the library. But the way this is done, there's an outline around the heart, and I used some polyester batting to put on top of it. And then after I did that, the fabric, the top fabric went on top of it. And so the polyester batting was just in the center heart and you cut away the, the polyester from the side before you put the fabric on top of it. The thread velvet design is in my sonnet. Um, somebody was asking about that and you can find, I'm gonna show you how to find a lot of these absolutely gorgeous, uh, not only thread velvet designs but grand dream hoop we're going to go into the library and i'm going to show you how you can find some of these designs but first let me show you a few other types of ones this is a combination of a pop-up design and also a yarn design so what you're seeing is done with the yarn couching foot 
And then there's three dimensional flowers that are on top of this. This is another design that was done with the Grand Dream hoop. And just to give you an idea of the proportions, I'm going to pull the Grand Dream up, hoop up over here. And look at how large that is. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it really is incredible to think that we can do such large embroidery designs. Another design that is a thread, um, a Grand Dream hoop is this felted butterfly. This is done with the felty needles. So that means there's no thread there. That is done. The felty needles push those fibers through. And that would worked out really, really well. And that was quite a large design. So it was created like this. This was one half. And then the other side was the other half. And I've got a few more designs here just to give you an idea of I kind of want to inspire you creatively to listen to the rest of it. So I hope you all stay tuned because I've got a lot of really fun things to think about. Now, this was a design that is absolutely stunning. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm really just trying to decide whether I'm going to paint it with my fabric pencils and color it in or whether I'm going to leave it black and white and then put some black and white fabrics together with it and make a bag. It, it is just absolutely gorgeous. There is a little, um, I wouldn't call it mistake. I did it deliberately. I left it the way it was because I wanted to, for you to kind of like have this idea. This looks really nice. Everything looks great. If you look at it really closely, I'll show you where there is a, a little bit of an adjustment that I should make that I didn't make, but I wanted to leave it there because I want you to see that even if things aren't perfect, they still look pretty beautiful. But anyways, isn't that gorgeous? All right. And a couple more different things that I've done. Now, this is a massive flower that is a sunflower and I've done it on door screening and you can get door screening all over the place. And I used Aquamagic, which is a wash away stabilizer on this. And I used the Grand Dream hoop for that. And uh, it turned out actually really, really well. The only thing I didn't do was I didn't change the bobbin thread on the back. I left it as white. So I can go in there with my pencil crayons and color it in or fabric markers. Um, and so I wasn't too worried about that because I knew I did it. But if I really cared about it, I would make the same color on the front and the back. There's all kinds of different screening now that you can get. And a lot of it is very safe to use with your machine. I know that um, Joanne's, I was in there and they have some really fine uh, screening too that's sold by the yard, which is a lot nicer than getting it at the hardware store. All right. And then if you look over here at this um, shirt that I did, this is a denim shirt. And right here, you'll see this design is the same that's on the door screening, except that I did it on a shirt. And then I just kind of kept building a design around. There's also a lot of other designs that are in there that are very, very large that are meant for working with the Grand Dream Hoop. So let's see. Um, I'm going to <laughs> give you an idea of something that I'm working on right now. Now, I've set this design up and I've stitched the first side of it. So when it's going into your machine, the first side is going to be close to the tower of your machine. And this will be to the right. And then the second side is going to be to the left. Many of you may not realize this, but there is a right and a wrong way to hoop your hoop. The words FOF should be at the top. And the, let, the number of the size of that uh, hoop should be at the bottom. And you'll see it right down there. I think you can see it right there. It's a size. But there's actually something on the back that gives you another indication of how you hoop it. If you look at the back, and I'm think I'm hoping you can see this, right down at the bottom, there is a part number with the letter A on it. And on the other side, which is wait a second, up here, there is a part number with the letter B on it. So when you're hooping, you should have the letter A on your right hand on your right side and the letter b on the left side and then if you hoop it so that the number is down at the bottom and the word fof is at the top then it's going to work very seamlessly and you're not going to get any messages if you would re reverse that the outside and have the letter b on the 
right hand side when you started, sometimes you'll get a message that will say that it needs to start on the right side. And so you can just flip it. And I took a picture of it. Just so if anybody needs to know exactly what it is, I can tell you the exact message of it. Um, but I did it the wrong way just to see what would happen if I'd get a message. Now, something else that often we don't think about doing when we're using the Grand Dream Hoop is I like to do a basting stitch around. Not only do I want to avoid putting a lot of bulk into my, my hoop, now, if it was just a plain cotton, I would have hooped the cotton and I would have hooped the stabilizer. But in this case, I'm working with a piece of silk and I also have some thin batting on the back of it. And so I chose not to hoop it into the hoop because the more fabric you have in the hoop, the harder it is to tighten the screws. And the farther apart that the two sides are, the more of an opening is in the middle. Now, I'm going to show you a close up of this. All right, when you look at the basting stitch, do you see that there's an opening here? And if you look at the other side up at the top, you'll see the same type of opening. The reason I like to do the basting stitch first is now I know how far apart the left design and the right design are. Now we can adjust this in precise positioning and that's a really easy way to do it. But if you're not aware that the left and the right has a little bit of a gap or an opening, then you're, you're going to be surprised and you're not going to be, um, when you turn the hoop, you're not going to be really taking advantage of some of the features that we're meant to be using when we're using the Grand Dream Hoop. So if you've never done a basting stitch when you go to use the Grand Dream Hoop, think about it because it's really going to give you an indication of how your design is going to line up when you go to turn it. Now, when we talk about the screws on the bottom, right, this is our quick release button. And then after we put our quick release button on the bottom and on the top, then we're going to tighten it. I usually try and tighten it a couple of screws at a time. I'll turn the bottom twice and then I'll turn the top twice. And I'm going to try and keep the amount of distance in this opening here I'm going to keep them the same on the top and the bottom. If you don't do that, if say you tighten the bottom really, really tight and you go all the way and make it really, really tight, then the top won't be able to be tightened as much. So your goal is to tighten the screw at the top and the bottom. But the reality is when you look at it, there is a space there, right? And that's the space that we're opening right here when I put my finger. That is the distance. That opening is the same distance between the way those two screws come together. And so that's why sometimes when you go to turn it, it's not lining up. And it has to do with how much of an overlap the left design and the right design have. A lot of designs don't have an overlap. In this case, it's not gonna overlap at all. When I go to turn it, and I'll show you how I made this design. When I went to turn it, what I'm gonna do is go to precise positioning and I'm gonna check here and here and make sure that they're lined up perfectly. And I'm gonna do that so you can see it. Um, and that's what the point that I'm at right now is to go and turn it. A lot of people think that they can just, like a regular design where it's not a turnable hoop, that you can just go and turn the hoop and not check. And then that's why they get designs that don't work out and where things don't line up. But I wanna show you how easy this is to do. So I'm gonna switch over to my machine and right today, I'm working with the Creative Icon 2. All right. And I'm at the point where I'm going to turn my hoop. So I put my hoop back on right here. I put it back on the way that it was. And I stitched the last colors on this side. And I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to go from the finished part of this project. And then I'm going to work back and show you how I started. But I think you need to get to see everything to understand how it's done. So when I say, okay, it's telling me, turn the hoop and change the thread color. So I'm going to say, okay. And now my design got changed on the screen, but I have to turn the hoop. And I'll, I'll move the camera in a second to show you, okay? So now I've turned the hoop. So the side that was stitched is on the left. And the new design is stitched on the right. 
And when I look at this, I can tell where the first stitch is going to be. It's right where that crosshair is. But I need to go to precise positioning to make sure that this area is lined up and also the bottom. So I'm going to go. I'm going to come down here. Let me see if I can get this in the screen. I'm going to touch precise positioning. And the crosshair where that is right now, that is not as important to me. What I want to know is where is the tip of this crosshair, the, the leaf that's on the left going to be. And to really to figure this out, I need to zoom in so that I can see, see, I placed it, but it wasn't as accurate as I thought, right? So I'm going to move it into place. Now, right now, all I've done is made sure that I have the exact accurate place that I want to stitch it. If you look on the screen, you'll actually see the other part of the design is lower down. If I wanted to actually make sure that I was doing this correctly, because that part's already stitched, I can move my crosshair there. And now when I touch number two, I'm going to look at the screen and my needle should be where that crosshair, where that part's already stitched. My needle is nowhere near that area, right? It's the same distance over here, about a quarter of an inch. And let me see if I can get this closer for you so that it will really show. And so all I have to do is on the screen of my machine, I am going to move and touch this arrow and move it over. And I'm going to adjust it as I'm going so you can see it. All right. And at some point, I'll put my needle down. And I don't have too far to go. And then I'm going to move it back a little bit. I'm really close right now, right? And look at there. I'm right on the money. All right. Now, once I've done that point, I really need to know where this other point is going to be, too. Is the design lined up with that? So I'm going to come back to precise positioning and touch number one. I'm going to zoom out to the whole screen. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to put my marker on the previous stitch. I'll zoom in so you can see it. So the previous set of designs is over on the left. And I'm sorry it's grayed out that you can't see it, but it'll make it a little easier in a second. All right. Now I've got that right. Now when I touch number two, my needle is going to move there. And it should be pretty close because the first one was pretty close, right? And look at that. Maybe I want to make it one notch a little bit over. So I'll just adjust it one notch. And now when I start, I'm going to say, okay. And now I know when I start stitching, sorry, I've got to come back out to the full screen so you can see. When I start stitching, my needle has not stayed up there at those points. It's come back to the very first stitch. But I know that this design is going to be lined up perfectly. So I'm going to just come back for a moment and see if you have any questions. And let's see that if that was clear enough. Because this is only the last part of it. As we get going, I'm going to show you the beginning part, which is how you make designs that are going to work in the Grand Dream Hoop. So while um, if anybody's got a question, mark it out. I'm going to show you a few more samples now. So this design was one that is in the Creative Icon, too. But it could be any design that you can use this way. And what I want to do after um, I come go back to the machine is I'm going to show you how I made the design and then how you can make other designs. Like, for example, this is uh, made just using all different stitches and using our shape creator. I made one that is exactly the same, but much, much bigger. This was done in the Grand Dream Hoop. One of the lovely things about our Grand Dream Hoop is you can, and when it comes to an embroidery design, one design has to be on the left, one design has to be on the right. They cannot be joined as one large design unless they've been brought into the software and cut apart. But if you choose, like the design I chose, there is a design here and a design here, but they're not touching, then it's really easy to use the Grand Dream Hoop for. And I'll show you some other examples to that. Now, when it comes to this one, this one is totally connected. And I made this in the, the 
uh, Creative Icon or Creative Icon 2. But because it was made for the Grand Dream Hoop and its stitches, you don't need to worry about splitting it apart. Your machine knows how to do that. And it did it automatically. Okay, let's see if we can answer some questions and I'll show you some more pro uh, projects that I have afterwards. All right, so one of the questions is when you align at the top and then went to the bottom, it kept the first one lined up. Now, that's a good question. The top one, I left a little bit of leeway. I lined the point up so that it was pretty close. And I thought, well, you know, let's see where the bottom is. When I went down to the bottom and I moved the bottom closer to that, it also affected the top one. They both moved at the same time. So if you're moving a design and you're moving the bottom a lot, then you've got to go back up and double check to make sure the top is lined up. I knew I had enough leeway that it was going to be perfect. And I only moved it one little um, touch or two. So it didn't move it that much. Now, Paulette um, asked about how do you actually turn the hoop? I'm going to go back and I'll show you again. Um, since the camera was a little bit too close, you didn't get to see that. And um, one, let's see what other questions we have here. So you use precise positioning. The question is, you use the precise positioning as part of the embroidery that was already finished. Not the, wait, not the second part that you're going to now. The design itself is one design. Precise positioning you can use at any time you're doing your embroidery, either at the beginning or at the end or in the middle. So um, I, when it was time to turn the hoop, when my machine told me it was time to turn the hoop, then I turned the hoop and that's when I use precise positioning to make sure that the design is going to line up. Now you can imagine with these stitches, look at how perfect that is. You cannot tell that that was a separate line, that it stopped, I turned the hoop, and then I made sure that it was going into the first, the last stitch here, and I connected it. Um, a question about when do I use three and four on precise positioning? Uh, Jamie, I do not usually use three and four unless I want to rotate the design. And that might be possible. Um, it is it is a possibility you might want to do that with the Grand Dream Hoop, but I want to put that question back till later because we're going to talk about if you've not screwed the hoop evenly and the top may be touching in the bottom and the bottom may not. Uh, but I'm going to come back to that question. For most of this, what I do with precise positioning I just go back to number one, I select a different point, And then when I touch number two, it automatically moves me there. And I think that's an easier way to learn how to use precise positioning. So um, let me just show you, I've got a few other things to show you here, okay? So here's an example. This was a design that I did and I did not have the Grand Dream Hoop at the time. So I hooped it once and did it and then I hooped it twice and then I added these here. I could have easily done this with the Grand Dream Hoop and added a lot more to it to make an absolutely beautiful uh, 13 and three quarter inch square. And these are designs that are the hand look designs. You'll find them in the library. They're called handmade look. And they're done with a 30 weight cotton. But you could see how easily that could be an absolutely beautiful, beautiful square design. The um, and we have another question about can you use the camera and the projection to align with the grand dream hoop? Now, I am ashamed to say, Terry, that I have not used the camera and or the projection with the grand dream hoop, and I'm not sure if it works because of the size of it, whether it will scan the whole thing. But if we have enough time, I'll check it out before we go today, okay? So make sure to stay tuned because I'll show you how that works, and then we're going to find out. And um, I, I should have thought about that, but I didn't because re the reality is there's so many people that have so many machines that work with the Grand Dream Hoop, right? And the Creative Vision, the Creative Sensation Pro, 4.5s that have the large, um, the larger embroidery arm, and then the Icon and Icon 2. So I was trying to keep it a little bit more broad in our description, but I think it's a, it's a really interesting um, thought. So we should look at that. Uh, but for some reason, I have it in my head that it's not going to work, but we'll, we'll check that out and see. All right. So now the other thing to consider is when you're making it a design for embroidery and you're going to use the Grand Dream Hoop, it's really important that you leave a little bit of wiggle room. 
that area in the middle that overlaps is 30 millimeters. And so when you make a design, you want to make sure that if you need to move it, the left and the right, when you move that precise positioning, it's moving both sides, left and right. So if you have not left enough room on the left or the right, you won't be able to move it enough. And so then your only hope, uh, hope is to uh, make sure um, you can unhoop it if you want to. But it's easier just when you're making your design, don't use the four and, uh, the 13 and three quarter inches. Just make it a little bit smaller than that when you're putting a design together. All right, I'm going to go back to our uh, Creative Icon 2. And I'm going to go back to the point to show you how it works when it cause, when it asks you to turn the hoop, and then I'm going to turn it for you. Then I'm going to move into our machine, and I'm going to show you how I designed um, designs like this that are meant for that. Now, looking over my shoulder, if you look over my shoulder, you can see there's a pillow at the back. That is an applique design that was done with the Grand Dream hoop. And the quilt that's hanging up on the wall, that was a design that I created in the software. And the, not only the pink hearts, but the other smaller feathers that are on the outside, they were all done in the Grand Dream Hoop in one hooping. So I could have broken it up into smaller hoopings, but it was so much nicer to be able to just do it in one hooping like that. All right, going back to our Creative Icon 2. Now, right now it is switched, right? When I go back to this design, and I'm, you'll see that the colors were broken up into the sign side one, and then it'll say side two. You can see all these colors here, all right? Now, this is all, it says 1.12, 1.26, all right? As you go back to the different colors, all right, I'm gonna just scroll back to the beginning here. Right now, my design is back at the very first color of the design. And so in that case, I'm gonna put my hoop back on. This side's already stitched, but I'm gonna put it back on just so you can see what happens with this, all right? Wait a second here. Whoops, I guess I need to put my needle up. Hold on a second here. All right, there, that works much, much better. All right, now, so it's starting back at the very first color, right? And if you look, you can see the needle set up just right to go. And I use the green thread. Now, as it goes through the different colors, and I'll come down, there is three designs. So the colors are all color sorted and color merged. All right. And the last color, all right, is the orange. And you can see it over here, right? And in that color, I've got quite a bit of stitches. So as I move through it, it is just going to move me from that stitch. All right. Then it's going to come down here. And then it'll do the last one. So I'm just going to go through it quickly just so you can see. All right. Now it's going to the next one. Whoops. Hold on here a second here. Let me come back over here. It flipped back. Did it flip back? I did a very bad job of doing that. All right. That's an easier way to do it, that's for sure. All right, that's the last design. So we've got to go to the first one here. Hold on a second. I just accidentally tripped up the wrong one. All right. So that's the color. This is the one I want. All right. So that's the very last color, all right? So if I was to let that stitch, that's the one that's stitched out here, all right, the bottom. If I go to the end of that color, okay, that color's got 325 stitches, and then I'm going to just move ahead, and toward the end, I'm just going to let it stitch. And then you'll see the message that comes up. Do you notice that middle area? That's the 35 millimeter, uh, 30 millimeters. Where, it, where the design is overlapping. And don't worry if you don't really understand what's happening right now. All right, I'm gonna take my thread out and now I'm just gonna let my machine stitch. All right, so let's cut the tail and move the thread. 
just going to move that out of there. I want the message to come up. So this is already stitched, but this is what happened when I did this. And then I'm going to get a message on my hoop to turn my hoop. Almost there. It's going around the outside edge. Okay. Now. The, oh, it's going to do the rest of them. <laughs> it, it changed the order of it. You think I would have been watching when it did that, right? It did the top one first, uh, last. I wasn't paying attention when it did it. Because I was busy getting other things ready for it today. All right, so we're almost at that point. I'm just looking at the stitches. I wanted to get to just about the end. And then I'm going to let the machine run. All right, so I'm going to turn the machine on. It's going to do that last little bit. All righty, now that's perfect. It's done. Now I get a message on my screen. It says, turn the hoop and change the thread color. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm literally going to do that, right? It says, turn the hoop. There's no guessing. So over here with the machine, I'm going to take the hoop off and I'm going to turn it around. And now the side that's not stitched is going to be on the right. And I'm going to connect it in. And so I'm ready to go. I come over to the screen and I touch OK. And when I look at my next set of designs, it's ready to set that design up here and start stitching on the right. Now, I if I just started the, the go button and touch start, then this is not going to be lined up properly and neither is this. And that's why you take that moment to do the precise positioning. All right, I'm going to come back and I'm going to go out of embroidery. All right, it's going to say it's going to reset. And I want to show you how I made this design because it's very, very easy to make this design. And I'm going to delete it. Okay, so I'm just going to edit the design and touch the trash. And then let me see. And let me see if I can get some more light on here. Let's see if it's any brighter. Well, maybe not. Maybe if we turn the light on, that might be better. See, no, that doesn't work either. All right, so the design that I chose, and I do have up the Grand Dream Hoop, is this one right here. So I brought it in. My hoop will automatically go down to the smallest hoop that it's going to fit in. So I went and changed it to the Grand Dream Hoop. And there you can see that design and the middle area, right? So if I was to add a design... The one thing I can't do is I cannot have a design that is in the middle area like that. The design is going to be broken up and, and layered together so that one design will not come on the left and the right. So I can mirror image it. I can flip it. I can do whatever I wanted to with it. I did mirror image it, top to bottom. And then I opened up Shape Creator. And I chose a circle under Basic. And it doesn't matter left or right. And then I went and I said I wanted six of them. All right. So there's six of them. Now, there's a problem. This one here is not in the right order, right? It's coming right over that seam, the left and the right. So then, first of all, what I did is I dragged it in and made the circle smaller. All right. Now I got a problem, right? I wanted these little arcs, that are the leaves that are on the bottom. I wanted them to be almost touching, but not perfectly touching. Now, if I if I want to make sure I can do this, I need to rotate it so that I can make sure that the designs that are on the left are fully on the left and the designs on the right are fully on the right. And then I was ready to stitch out. I didn't need to split it. I didn't need to do anything. That was completely done when I did that. Okay. Now, 
let's see. I want to just make sure I ask, uh, answer a couple of other questions here. So Hillary said, does it reset when you moved it for the second time? Exactly. It does. When you changed it, when I got to the very last color on the right and it stitched the first side and it gave me the message to rotate the hoop, it also rotated the design. It did it right on the screen. And it was because I had the ghost mode on, it wasn't quite so obvious because it was only showing me the color that it was actually stitching. But if I didn't have ghost mode on, you would have seen all of the color was on the right. And that was the second design. In this case, it's symmetrical. It wouldn't matter. But the design really does flip completely in the screen when you do that. I'll show you another design afterwards that is not symmetrical. Is there any other questions uh, while we're talking about that? And uh, I think... I'll go back to the machine because I want to show you a few more things about how to do it. And then we're going to talk about designs that you can find. Well, let's actually, let's go to the library. All right. I'm going to go to my Sonet library. And these are these new designs. These dandelions just came in. I was looking at them. I actually made a little design with them and I did it in the grand dream hoop and just put them all together. So here's all the designs and I just put them together and put different collections you can see over on the left all the different ones. And the only thing that I made a point of doing is I, because I like to make my life easy, I can have them cross over the left and the right. All right. If I wanted this one to be on the left, I could move it over or I could have it be in the middle. But if I wanted to make it as easy as possible, like for example, this leaf that's here, I probably would want this leaf to just overlap and come into the center area because then when I go to save it, I can save it and split it intelligently. And then I don't have to worry about matching it up because in this case, it really wouldn't matter, right? The where it matters is when you're going to have a design that is on the left and the right, because then what's going to happen, it's going to split it and it will split it intelligently or not. So in this case, look at this little uh, dandelion here. All right. The dandelion comes on to the left side, uh, the right side, and it's also on the left side. So when it splits it, the way it's probably going to do it, if I do it intelligently, is it's going to keep the stem on the left side, and it'll take the flowers and the leaves and put it on the right. Something like that. But we can do it and find out later on. All right. So let's go back. How would you find grand dream hoop designs in the my sonet library the easiest way is to go over to the design size and tell it that you want the size i'm going to say that i want a design that is more than 300 and less than 350 millimeters all right and the height and the width i'm going to say the same thing and so what it's going to do is it's going to automatically collect designs that are bigger than that and any designs that you see there, this one here is absolutely gorgeous. This is the horoscope, a zodiac wheel. And if I wanted to see it up closer, I can touch it. And then there's the design. And it is split right down that center of that design. If I come back, these are the four scenes. Remember those four seasons of the scenes? Look at the difference between this one and then the one that I did. You can see I've got a little bit more colorful sky fabric here and I added some free motion stitches to it and it kind of added a little bit more interest than the one, the original one. But let's look at some of these other designs. Here you have the deer. This is the winter scene. You have got a summer scene that's got the um, horse in the meadow. And if you're not into windmills, you can always take the windmill out. And then this one here is gorgeous. It's a little boy that's fishing. And uh, so lots and lots of fun designs. But let's look farther. Here's you're going to find some of these thread velvet designs. This, I think, was the one that you were asking about. This is a thread uh, velvet floral decor. And this is the one that I stitched out. And I think that's exactly the same one. If it's not, it's from that series of collections. I think it's a, it might be a little bit different, but it's very close. It's from the same collection. All right. And that is from the floral decor. Uh, collection. And if you want more information about stitching it, you can scroll down and you go turnable hoop embroidery. Oops, wait a second. Let me go back to my software here. 
All right. If you scroll down looking at the design, you can go and look at the thread velvet and you can look at turnable hoop embroidery. And it gives you a lot of that information about how to do the grand dream hoop embroideries. All right. So here we go. As we come down, look at all of these designs. These are all meant for the grand dream hoop. And they go on and on and on. Let's see how many of them are. There are 82 designs that are in there. And I bet you there's a few more than that. All right. There's one of these that there's that floral one that I did on the black. All right. And if I come back here, that's this one right here. Okay. And then I'll keep coming back because look at all of these beautiful floral designs. This is a grand dream hoop design. Imagine how large that flower is. This could be just gorgeous on a quilt if you wanted to make yourself a three-dimensional uh, garden. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to download this because I want you to see how this is separated out. So I'm going to go to touch my Sonet enabled, and I'm going to go to my computer. And then it will pop up in my software so I can show you how to do it. All right. So when it comes in, the design is two parts. It's grouped together. All right. And if I want to separate them out so I can see how they're sewing, okay, there's group and then there's ungroup. So I can click off of it and now it's two separate designs. So I often will do this when I am going to go and stitch out a design that is already created because I want to see how it's going to join together. All right. I'm going to change my hoop because right now I don't have the right hoop selected. And as I come in here, there's the first design. And I can see that this is the side that's going to stitch out first. And then I'm going to come back and put the second one into place. And you'll notice, and this is why I wanted to show you this. There is a marker stitch up at the top. Let's see, get my mouse here and zoom in up here. Do you see that little marker stitch? So the first side, this part of the design is going to stitch out right away. And then when it goes to the second side, it is going to start, it is going to stitch that marker stitch out right away. And then you should line them up. And when you do that, then the gaps in the design are no longer open. See this? When I move them so that they're connected, I know that they're going to be connected and the design is going to join up properly. So it is a nice idea to be able to judge how the design is going to stitch out. All right. You can see down here, it's also going to move in here. When I move that design, you'll see how that joins up. Now, if a design has already been made as a grand dream hoop design, it's already got that split made to it. You are much better off not bringing it into, you can bring it into the software and look at it, but you're better off sending it directly to your machine. Because if I go to export this design right now in my software, I have presets selected and it will try and split it again and it might split it in a different place. So when a design is already created, you're better off and I'll come back here instead of going to file and export. And I want to show you where to look at that. OK. If you if you are doing it, you can uncombine it. Look at these splitting options. All right. See, it's going to automatically split it for me because it knows it's for the grand dream hoop. And it's going to decide, is it going to be intelligent with tolerance or is it going to be a straight line with compensation? The tolerance means how much you can move the design left or right after it's been split. And you can decide, do you want more or less compensation with that? And if you just go with a straight line, it will split it in two. Now, because this design has already been split, you don't want to run it through the software and split it again. It's better just to move it from my library, all right? And I could go back up here and I could go and send it directly to my machine. That's a better choice or else send it to your computer and just save it on your, um, ex you know, just have it as a saved design that is a VP3 and then move it over with a USB if that's the way that you can do it. Okay. I can add the marker stitches myself. When I go to save this and export this design in the software, it is automatically going to add marker stitches. And what will happen is it will add another set of marker stitches. And that's why 
it's better not to take a design that's already created and run it through the exports process again because if you have that the marker stitch set to automatically give it to you it's going to add new marker stitches to it and th that gets a little bit confusing and that might be something that's happened to some people now in my software i'm going to go to this design here all right here is my dandelions that i've done and i'm just going to move them around just for the fun of it and overlap them this is just a creative design that I've made, right? It's for the Grand Dream Hoop. There are no marker stitches there right now. But when I go to File and Export, oh, look at something's outside of my hoop. I guess I'll have to move it in there. That's probably what it is. All right. And now I export it. It is going to add the marker stitches. And it will also decide. Right now, I have intelligent with tolerance selected so that's what it's going to do and then i have alignment stitches for the turnable hoop selected and so it will give me alignment stitches if i don't want those alignment stitches i can deselect it but that's a choice that you turn on and off and you find that under the splitting options here okay so uh, i hope that makes more sense what i found with the design that i was doing that's in the hoop um this let me get the design that i'm talking about when I did this design, this is a design that was already a Grand Dream Hoop design, and it was split here. The first side that stitched was this one, and then it went to the second side. Because I ran it into the software, it added another export um, stitches. It, it added a cross right in the center here. Plus, it still had the other ones that are at the top of the bottom. Now, you might think that this was created and it's perfect, but it actually has not isn't perfect. And if you look right here, do you see the stitching right here? The design that the way they made it, this satin stitch was not meant to touch that. But the little stitches here, the ones that you're seeing that are like single stitches, they were meant to touch the other side. And I didn't move the design over far enough and so it didn't touch now in the end it wouldn't be the end of the world because i could easily go in and just sew a stitch there i consider this would be a success but if you're a perfectionist then what you're looking for is to see the areas where they join up is it going to line up and the only way you can tell that is looking at precise positioning when you turn the hoop all right so let's see now patricia <laughs> <laughs> Patricia said, I've been staring at this hoop since I got my icon too. Listen, Patricia, start with something simple, okay? You don't have to start with the most complicated design. Start with something simple. I think the idea of creating a design like this, where things don't have to touch perfectly and where you can go in and easily move it is a really great and easy thing to do because it's easy to correct it, right? If you're um, if you make the design and then it's very easy to move it over that little bit. Now, in a design like this, the challenge was this was intelligently split. And so it didn't just split as a straight line. It had some of it on one side, some of it on the other. And so there really had only like two or three clicks that I could move it over left to right. So then my only option would have been to... Um, would have been to just unhoop it and move it over a little bit, which wouldn't be a bad option, but it's not what you're aiming to do if you can avoid it. Now, when we look at this hoop and you look at the screws that are on the bottom, sometimes you can actually see that they're slanted one way or another. And that usually means that one side is tighter than the other. But even if it's not, you can see that the way that that basting stitch um, stitched out and didn't join up, then you know exactly how far apart that design is going to be. And so then when you go to move it, you know which way you're going to use move it and you know how far apart it's going to be. This is the telltale thing that solves all your problems because you know right away when you start. So what I do is I do the basting stitch at the very beginning. It will start up at the top and do the basting up here, go around and then come down. And then it goes to the other side. It says, turn your hoop. 
and then it goes and does the basting on the other side. And you turn it open, it'll do the basting there. But it was worth the effort for me to know that I was going to have this much space in between. And actually, if you look at it, I think well, I think you see it better on this side. You can actually see, let me see if I can peek in there. Do you notice that this one is a little higher than this one? So that means that my hoop is tilted a little bit, like one side's a little higher than the other. And so not a problem. Now that I know about it, I can solve it. And I can know when I move my design, it's going to be absolutely perfect. When you're looking at designs and you're thinking about the designs that you're going to use, try and use the designs that are pre-made and just send them there because you know that they've probably been smartly um, split. And they're meant to kind of go together, like the um, the one with the flowers. There are all these mass. I'm literally these flowers are this big. Imagine how beautiful it could be on a quilt that maybe was just like a uh, a quilt that didn't have a lot of interest to it. And then you could do these massive big appliques to it um, down the top before you go and put it all together and quilt it. Now, let me just pull a couple of these things out of the way because. I'm running out of time, <laughs> but I hope I want to show you a few other things before we go too far. I'm going to go back to the library for just a minute here. All right. And I'm going to come back out here. And at, when you're looking at a design and you're thinking about how they work, it really is a good idea to evaluate them. Look, at there's all these big flowers and leaves, more of those. These quilt designs are stunning. But don't start with these guys, okay? Because these have to be absolutely perfect. You can see how they overlap. And their applique, raw edge applique, and then there's quilt designs that are stitched in through a batting on all the different layers. So when you think about this, you know, start with something simple and then build your way up to some of these designs, okay? Because my goal is I want you to be successful. And I think the more, and look at here's some more applique designs here. These are just gorgeous, gorgeous designs. I know somebody was using this one the other day. I saw them stitching that out. It was gorgeous. But just to give you an idea of some of the beautiful designs. Oh, I have this stitched out on a jacket. I should have gotten that and showed it to you. And there is the butterfly. All right. And then here, look at this little garden design here. This is just gorgeous. And each one of these is something special and unique. So there are tons and tons of beautiful designs that are in there. It's just a matter of thinking about how you can use them and what you want them to look like. But start simple. Don't make your life, don't choose the most complicated design and then get frustrated and give up. You know, the idea is you start learning at the beginning. You choose a simple design. You get used to using precise positioning and checking a couple of points and then you can turn it and then you get your confidence up and then you're going to be able to do all the bigger, bigger designs. Now, obviously, I didn't get to any other hoops, but the Grand Dream Hoop. And I've still got like a dozen things to tell you, but um, I didn't want I wanted to let you guys know there is a brand new accessory catalog that just came out for FOF. It's uh, two, uh, 2022 and it is available from your dealer. Make sure that you talk to your dealer if you're interested and if she doesn't have it she can order it for you the you can find the part number up above in the information with the hoop and all that uh out there for those of you that have the creative icon too take out your grand dream hoop and start using it all right i promised that i was going to go back and check to see if we can use the scan with the grand dream hoop i'm going to do that and also and I, I'm pretty sure the answer is no with the Grand Dream Hoop, but we're going to try it anyways just to see, okay? And um, hold on a second because I got a bunch more things to tell you when I come back. So just wait for a second over here. All right, I'm going to get my hoop. And I hope you're enjoying this enough that you're going to give it a try. All right, now I'm going to go. I've got my design here. If I wanted to scan it, on my creative icon too, I would go to hoop options and you notice it's not active, right? That means we cannot do the scanning with the grand dream hoop. We can change our background color and some options there, but we don't have the option to scan. Now we would have the option to project, I think, because the projection, if I turn the projection on, let's see what happens. 
All right, I'm going to attach my hoop. And now I'm going to, let me just see. Oh, look at that. There is my design projected on my screen. All right. Now I can move. Let me just come over here and get rid of this. If I wanted to see up on the top left-hand corner, then I can move the area that's lit up. All right. I'm just going to keep this up here. I want to show you how this works. What a cool thing. I'm so glad to know that this is going to. So where what you're seeing, that crosshair is actually where the needle is. All right. Whoops. Oh, I went the wrong way. Let me come over here. Like go over here. Oh, I'm going to come over here. I think I went up. Oh, look at that. It's not letting me move because it thinks I'm on the other side. I'm going to flip my hoop around for it to show up there right, okay? So it is a little different when you're working with that. And if I come down, let me just go down. I'll bring it back down. So it looks like it's keeping it centered in the hoop. So there's some limitation using the scanning. All right, so there is the design. But isn't that so neat to see the design that's on showing there? Now, I didn't line it up with the same one. Where I had my position was different, but you get the idea. And I think I turned it around the other way too. Yeah, so, all right, so I'm going to get rid of this design. I know I'm probably going to run over a little bit here, but I do want to show you something really quickly because I think you're going to want to see this, all right? Remember those little doilies that I made for you? What I did was I went to Stitch Creator, and I'm just going to give you an example. Of how, oh, sorry, it's not Stitch Creator. I went to Shape Creator. But before I did that, I went to Sequence Creator, and I brought in a stitch. And the reason I did that is the first two stitches in there are tie-offs. And when you're doing this, you want to delete the tie-offs because you don't want it after every single stitch to stop and tie off at the beginning and the end. All right? So I'm going to bring in a scallop stitch. So just hold on for a second because you're going to want to see this. And I'm going to choose this scallop, all right, and say, okay. Now, I've got one scallop that's right here. I'm going to go to Shape Creator and I'm going to choose the circle. And I'm choosing the second circle because that's the way the stitch works. So there is my satin stitch. All right, and all I'm going to do is touch, go up, and bring it up. I can make it, I'm going to make it smaller just to save some time. All right, because then I won't need as many stitches. And I just keep touching and adding more stitches. Now, in this case, this is one design. I think that's just about right. All right, and I'm going to say, okay. What I need to do is make sure you'll notice, all right, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see. You'll notice that one scallop is completely inside that gray area. And down here, the other scallop is meeting right in the middle. Now, if I wanted an even number, I could have put an even number, but that's not important to me. What's important is that there is a place where one stitch finishes and it's inside that gray area. So now when I go to stitch it out, it is going to stitch. All right. And I have ghost mode on, so I'll take ghost mode off and then close this up so you can see it. It's going to stitch the right side first. And then it, when I get down to this one that's in the middle, it'll stop and tell me to turn and go back the other way. So even though it is one design, it is not limited the way that embroidery designs are. You have much, much more ability to be able to um, go like you see here, right? So this this could be this big if I want it to be. This I made as a square and I did it in the Grand Dream Hoop. Now, the nice thing about using a scallop in that way is that when you're using the scallop stitches like that and you go to split and you do the design, what I can do, and I did that on this one, and I didn't do it on this one, is I 
did the, the scallop satin stitch, I cut away the fabric and I used Aqua Magic for that. But then because it's an embroidery design, you can go back and stitch it a second time. And so it catches in all the raw edges. And it's a really, really nice way of using your decorative stitches. And you can absolutely make some absolutely gorgeous things. But it forces you to make sure to line up that point, right? Because it's very obvious one scallop has got to line up with the other. So when you turn it, then you're going to have to check to make sure that that scallop is lined up. I hope you're all excited enough to try this. The kinds of designs you're missing out on if you're not using your Grand Dream Hoop is there's just all this creativity that you're not doing because you just got to get it out of the box and start using it. All right. Now, and for those of you that have the Creative Icon 2, you, if you didn't have it before, you have it now. So you might as well make an, uh, you know, get it out, choose a design and start playing with it. And the next Facebook Live is Thursday, September 8th with Nancy Bronstein. And she's going to be um, showing you how to use creative ways to use panels with your quilts. Oh, I saw that. It's really cool. It's a beautiful panel of all these quilt designs that she um, is going to use it in, in a bunch of different ways to make a quilt. By the way, my name's Karen. If I, I never think about introducing myself. I hope you all had fun. I hope you're all... Just so excited to try it, and I can't wait to hear from you. So um, make sure that you spend a little bit of time next week or sometime soon with your Grand Dream Hoop. You won't be sorry. And the other hoops that we were going to talk about, we'll have to wait for another day. So thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.